Hi everyone, I am Elizabeth Rossi Roque. I am the Metadata and Discovery Archivist at Emory University, and I'm here with Cliff Landis, the Digital Initiatives Librarian at the Robert W. Woodruff today. And we are here today to share our experiences in working with linked data and specifically Wikidata, um, walking you through where we've been um, and how we might share our experience with y'all. So this is one of my favorite tweets of all time. Just about every conference these days tends to have some sort of linked data session on the schedule. And just about every one of them follows with comments on the Twitterverse like this. Love the presentation, didn't understand any of it. Or linked data is so exciting, but it's too hard to implement. Our intent today is to try to demystify linked data and show how even the smallest institutions without technical staff and no technical expertise can easily include their collections in the linked open data web using free tools. And I'll be monitoring Twitter afterwards to see how we did. We freely admit that neither of us work at small archives, but much of the work that both of us has done within the linked data universe has been mostly self-driven and self-taught. We want to start with a brief introduction to what linked data is, what problems it can solve, and why it's important for all libraries to participate in this space. So Cliff and I both work at a library called the Robert W. Woodruff Library. Thank you, Coca-Cola Money. Um, and this is a perennial source of confusion for patrons and a frequent question at our reference desk. We do not work at the same library, though it's named the same thing. So if you Google Woodruff Library Atlanta, you will get results for both Emory University um, and for the Atlanta University Center. So one of the perennial questions that we have as information professionals is how we can address this challenge and make things easier for all of us. How do we make sure that when researchers search for Woodruff Library and they want to go to the one at Emory, that they get things about Emory? So one of the things we need to do is make the web a little bit smarter. We need to help Google out here a little bit. So what we really need to do would be to disambiguate the two names, our two names, um, so that when someone does search for the library on Emory's campus, they aren't getting links and resources from the library at Atlanta University Center. But how do we do this? Text doesn't always work. The text name is exactly the same, Robert W. Woodruff Library. We need some other way to disambiguate these two places. And one way to do this is with linked data. With linked data, each topic or concept is given its own URL. It's given its own identifier instead of a text name. The identifiers all linked on this page on the upper left, those all refer to the Woodruff Library at Emory, not the Woodruff Library at AUC. Linked data websites that use these URL, URL identifiers then can connect to each other saying, that this Woodruff library over here is the same as that Woodruff library over there, and know that the Woodruff library is at Emory, not the Atlanta University Center. But linked data does more. It doesn't just help us disambiguate names by providing identifiers. It can also link information to that identifier, which then allows Google to connect the right information to the right location to the correct library. So for instance, we can describe lots of individual facts about Woodruff Library by linking it to other identifiers. We can see that Woodruff Library is an instance of an academic library. We are an academic library. Woodruff Library has a libraries.org ID of 11950. Woodruff Library at Emory is different from the AUC Woodruff Library. And for the AUC Woodruff Library, we can see that it has a subsidiary organization of the Archives Research Center. And it was founded, you can see Inception, it was founded in 1982. Essentially, each one of the blocks on this page can be represented by a unique identifier, which is how these relationships are generated, essentially creating a web of data that machines can process and understand. 
This is what those web diagrams and presentations about linked data are trying to convey. One piece of information about a thing, like the Woodruff Library, is joined to other things by these links and identifiers, a much more reliable and predictable method of retrieval than searching for the text Robert W. Woodruff Library. This is what linked data is trying to achieve. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, that's cool, but why do we care? Is linked data just about differentiating similar names for Google searches and giving librarians a way to nerd out with data structures? Let's look at a couple of real world benefits of linked data. The first and probably most important to our administrators is that linked data improves discoverability. Search engines like Google are built to pick up on linked data and rank pages higher with embedded linked data. They're just built that way. We've both seen improvements to our statistics. Both me and Cliff have seen improvements after creating linked data for our collections and institutions. The screenshot here is a snapshot of the AUC Archives Research Center's referral traffic before on the left and after on the right, adding information to Wikipedia and Wikidata. And you can see how much that traffic, referral traffic increased after those changes were made. Creating linked data makes it much more likely that search engines will find your information because linked data sources such as Wikidata are used by Google as a data source for searches. The web structure we saw for linked data earlier makes it easy for search engines to query these types of data sources. In April 2021, when I last pulled the statistics on this slide, you can see April 21st, 2021, there were 16.4 million separate requests, requests for information, queries run against the knowledge base um, in Wikidata in one day. Um, and it was done by search engines such as Google, Yahoo, Bing, DuckDuckGo, many, many others. And ensuring your data is in these databases means that your information will be harvested and improved discovery of your materials because that is the information Google is using as its information source. Linked data doesn't just have benefits for SEO. Linked data also allows us and Google to ask questions of our data. Linked data is easier, the structure of linked data is easier to process by machines, which makes these types of queries possible. So for instance, this is a query that I ran in Wikidata. So I ran across all the information in Wikidata to find out how old musicians were when they died essentially testing that adage that musicians die at the age of 27 and follow the pattern of Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and the like. It's a little hard to see the data results here, but the graph, um, if you look at it, you see this big curve, and the peak of that curve is not at 27. It's in the 70s and 80s. It's not um, what that would have predicted, um, proving that adage not to be true. Here at Emory, we found that creating linked data for our collections has some practical uses too. Obviously those queries are fun, but there are also some practical ways to use it. Um, I did a project to add all of our collections to Wikidata a couple of years ago, and we'll go into a bit more detail later, um, but basically I added a property, archives at, to all the creator names represented in Wikidata for our collections. Doing that has let me run this query on this slide that looks for all resources that have more than one archives app property. So essentially what it did is it went out and looked at every single item in Wikidata that said they had, this person had their archives at a particular institution. And it looked for places where there were two, meaning a split collection. And then I asked it to say, return to me all the ones that have Emory as one of those. So what I was able to do in Wikidata then is trace back all the collections that we own that are also owned by somebody else, essentially finding all those split collections. So linked data allows us to benefit not only from the data that we add, but also the data that others have added. I would have never known about some of these. Some I knew about, some I didn't. And this query helped me find that information. The Carlos Museum at Emory has also been adding their data to Wikidata which enables this query on this slide, which looks for the birthplaces of artists that have works in the Carlos Museum. 
Now their project, all they did was go in and added an identifier for their museum to various artists saying that they held one of their works. They didn't necessarily add other information about that artist. Instead, what they've been able to do is match that information to information already in Wikidata, such as birthplaces of all those artists, and then be able to create images like this, which is a map of all the collections held at the Carlos Museum, all the artists with an item at the Carlos Museum and the birthplaces of all those people. Libraries can also take advantage of this sort of global crowdsource data set in Wikidata to create real world applications on top of it. In 2018, Cliff and Christine Wiseman at AUC noticed that there was no way to quickly identify and map out cultural heritage organizations in Georgia. They were trying to address disaster response. So using a Lyricist Catalyst grant, they were able to build this application. Georgia NCH, which is a tool that maps and provides directory contact information for all of Georgia's natural, cultural, and historic organizations. The project uses Wikidata as its source data rather than creating it on their own. Every night what happens is the application automatically copies information about cultural heritage organizations, including addresses, phone numbers, locations, and other information from Wikidata over to its own server and then displays it on the Georgia's NCH website using a map and a table. I do have to note that for all of its strengths, Wikidata isn't perfect. So here's an example of a quarry that kind of demonstrates that. This um, quarry looks at Emory's collection strengths in African-American history. So I wanted to find all the archival collections at, insti at various institutions around the US that have a creator that attended a historically black college or university. Emory is at the top of this list um, with 53 different collection creators that graduated from an HBCU. Now that makes some sense because one of Emory's collecting strengths is African-American history. But I also suspect that this is evidence that many collections are underdescribed in Wikidata. Um, I don't think actually, Emory probably is in the real world at the top of this list. And this is where all of you come in. Linked data only works if everyone participates. Otherwise we end up with biased data, much like that last query. A group of researchers a couple of years ago actually looked into this on Wikidata and tested the variations between Wikidata and real world data. They were looking at scientists and software engineers. And what they found was that scientists in North America and Europe were heavily overrepresented in Wikidata. The table at the bottom of this slide kind of demonstrates some of those numbers. This is probably because the Wikidata movement is most popular in those places in, the, in Europe and the US. And data sets like the Library of Congress name authority file have been loaded into Wikidata and those also preference those communities. So now that we've talked a little bit about why libraries and archives should participate in linked data, and we've hopefully convinced you that you should participate in this movement too and help us unbias Wikidata. We're going to spend the rest of our time walking you through creating that data, especially in repositories with limited resources. So I want to note first that even if you can't participate in linked data right now, it's important to make your data linked data ready. Um, I am sure there will be scripts and things that will be transforming all of our data into linked data. One of the ways that you can do this is by ensuring that you add identifiers to your data whenever you can. So if you have an EAD record or you have a MARC record or whatever metadata format you're using, every time you create a subject heading, be sure to also somewhere add the identifier from the Library of Congress subject headings file. Or if you add a creator, consider also including an identifier in your metadata from Snack or Viaf or one of the other controlled vocabularies out there. And then of course, the second way that, that we would like to talk about to participate in linked data is to work by editing and creating linked data in Wikidata for free. 
um, which I'm now going to turn it over to Cliff, who's going to go into a little bit more detail about. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I'm going to turn on my camera there. Now you'll be able to see me. So Wikidata is the linked open data database, also called a graph, that's produced by the Wikimedia Foundation. And you'll know them as being the people who uh, support and organize and run Wikipedia. It's a linked data platform with its own local ontology that's being used by libraries to start linking together all of our information up to the wider world in a very lightweight way. So it's free, it's open source, it's open to anyone. And Wikidata is also one of my favorite platforms because it allows anyone to begin creating linked open data in a very user-friendly way, which is why I'd like to take a deep dive into it with you, if you don't mind. So as of this recording, as of this morning, there are 4,896 different repositories represented in Wikidata with 78,190 items with an archives app property. So it's actually a, a pretty large data set inside of Wikidata where other institutions are involved. And here's a screenshot for the Wikipedia page for Alice Walker. Now, is this page linked data? Well, there are links on that page that send us to other pages. And one of those links on the left-hand menu goes to Wikidata's item for Alice Walker. Let's take a look at that. So Wikidata is a database. It's an interface where you can add information as data, as opposed to like sentences. So things like birth date, um, identities of parents or children, names of awards that were won, occupation, those sorts of things. So when you string these facts together, you're able to start making inferences and asking more complex questions. So for example, using these three-part factual statements called triples, we can see that Alice Walker was born in Eatonton and Eatonton is in Georgia. So we know that Alice Walker was born in Georgia. And Google is already making use of linked data in the same way, because if you Google a question in natural language, often the results that pop up will answer your question. So here we're asking, where was Alice Walker born? And immediately the answer pops up both in the results list on the page and in the knowledge panel on the right. So Wikidata and Wikipedia are both valuable for helping users discover our archival collections, but they operate a little bit differently. So in order to be included in either Wikidata or Wikipedia, a topic must meet certain notability requirements. In the case of Wikidata, it's a clearly identifiable conceptual or material entity. The entity must be notable in the sense that it can be described using serious and publicly available references. So a web page or a book or an article, those sorts of things. In the Wikipedia, or excuse me, in the Wikimedia community, folks are encouraged to be bold and to try things out. And as time goes by, rules and best practices sort of emerge as a result of community discussion. It's a long and sometimes messy <clears throat> process to get the community to some state of consensus. I'm sure you know nothing about that working in libraries, but it has led to a relatively stable and high quality set of information. So Wikidata is a newer tool, and so the rules and best practices are still being formed. As in all things, expect change as this tool grows and changes over time. And I'll also anecdotally note that the vandalism rate is much lower on Wikidata than Wikipedia. And I think honestly, that's probably because it's a relatively newer tool. And now I will hand it back over to Elizabeth. Great, thanks. If you can pass screen share back to me. So now that we've record, explored a little bit about what Wikidata is, Let's do a very brief workshop on how to use it and how to start beginning adding your data to Wikidata. So Wikidata is really made up of a collection of triples. It is a very linked data E word, but let's unpack that a little bit. So triples are made up of Q items and our entities. These are the objects that we're describing. So Q items um, being the earth, humans, cats, 
Alice Walker, Emory University, and P numbers, which are properties. So a triple is basically a statement or a sentence about something. So let's say that we wanted to record in Wikidata that Emory University is located in Atlanta, Georgia. Emory and Atlanta are the Q numbers, the things that we want to describe, the things that we want to relate to each other. Located in is our P number or our property, the relationship between those two things. A shortcut that I kind of like to use when I'm talking about triples, because it's kind of a new language, um, is to say that Q numbers are nouns, person, place, thing, idea, and P numbers are the verbs. So in our sentences, we have two nouns connected by a verb in the middle or two Q numbers connected by a property value. And here's what that might look like in practice. Um, so you can read these as sentences. So if we were to read the one in the middle of the slide, Alice Walker has a place of birth, Eatonton. Alice Walker and Eatonton being our Q numbers or our object and subject of our triple and the place of birth being the relationship between those two or our property. And you can do this with other things. Um, you can see um, the example at the bottom. Um, we've related Alice Walker to a number, to another identifier in the Library of Congress name authority file. So if you look at a Wikidata entry, if we were to look up Alice Walker in um, Wikidata, you would be seeing these P and Q relationships. Though when you look in Wikidata, those are expressed in words for human readability. But Wikidata really is reading P and Q triples. So we have Alice Walker, again, our Q number, is an instance of our property, a human. That's our end value or the other um, resource that we are relating Alice Walker to. And then each of these has a Q number or a P number. And you could do this with many other properties. You could add a bunch of other properties um, to the Alice Walker entry to add more detail about her. So let's look at a real world example. I'm actually gonna open up Wikidata um, right now. And here is the Wikidata front page. And we are actually gonna do some real world work. Um, we're gonna work through an example. Um, this comes to us from Georgia Southern, um, who has graciously allowed us to make them our guinea pig today. Um, and we're gonna look at the Frank W. and Lillian Spencer collection and try to create some data in Wikidata for it. So my first step really is to have some source material. Wikidata is really just encoded metadata. So we need to have some um, information for this. And what I'm gonna use, um, Georgia Southern has created a page, a lib guide um, to information about Frank Spencer. And then there is also a link to the finding aid which is here, which has a beautiful biographical note um, with all sorts of detail. And this is going to be the source of what we're going to go in code in Wikidata. So the first step when you are working with archival collections in Wikidata, beyond logging in, I will mention this, log in when you start creating information. It will let you do that without logging in. And you will then share your IP address with the world. So create an account for yourself. Um, and then once you've done that, you can start adding to Wikidata. And anybody can do this. Um, you don't have to have any sort of authority to do it at all. So our first step is to make sure that Georgia Southern's Menace Room and Armstrong Campus Archives has a Wikidata entry because we're really trying to connect all this information to them with that archives at property. So we're gonna search for that too. Um, so let's look for Menace room and there it is. So it's kind of nice. It does some autofill for you. So here is the um, Wikidata entity or the Wikidata item um, for the repository that holds the Frank Spencer collection. And you can see it's got an associated queue number here with it. So we've confirmed that that is true. So now let's try to create um, an entity for Frank W. Spencer. Um, he was a civil rights activist. 
He was a master pilot um, in the port of Savannah for 30 years. Um, according to the finding aid, um, he also started a first Boy Scout troop for African-American children in Chatham County um, and served on the Board of Education and a bunch of other things. So I always, when I create a new entity, go ahead and search for it just to make sure it's not in here already. So we're going to search for Frank W. Spencer. And it looks like no match was found. I go ahead and look. Looks like we don't have any. So then I'm going to create a new item. So in the bar on the left, there is a link, create a new item. And if I click on that, I get this. So the first thing you have to choose is the language you will be writing your entry in. I am choosing English. I do not speak one of these other languages, but if you do, you certainly could create an entry in Spanish if that made sense for you. So I will enter an English label um, for him. So we'll write Frank W. Spencer. And then a brief description. Um, I will describe him as a civil rights activist and master river pilot. And then he doesn't have any aliases that I'm aware of. So I will go ahead and create my entity. So as you see, now we've got Frank W. Spencer along with a Q number. So he has a newly assigned Q number. He is now in Wikidata. Now the task is just to start adding properties and values for those properties. So the first thing as we saw with Alice Walker's record is you wanna go ahead and create an instance of. Every time you do this, you should create an instance of. This helps um, Wikidata with understanding information properly. So if we have information about humans, humans have birth dates, um, buildings do not. And so we want to be sure that when we ask for information back from Wikidata, that we have classified these objects properly. So it's important to always start with an instance of, he is of course an instance of a human, and I'm able to just select that from a drop down menu. I could have also kept typing if I didn't find a value that I wanted. And then once you've done that, you simply click on this publish button and it publishes that statement. So we now have one triple that we've created for Frank W. Spencer. Frank W. Spencer is a human, but we can do better than this. Let's add some more. So I want to add his occupation. I think it's important to list that. So I've done a property for occupation um, and I'm gonna look and see if river pilot is in here somewhere. That's not quite what I want. It's got a description that it is a print in the National Gallery of Art. I actually did some um, research before this um, and looked across Wikidata to see if I could find the right Q number that I wanted here um, and how it's listed in here is maritime, maritime pilot, maritime pilot, mariner who maneuvers ships through congested waters. That is what we want. And I'm going to go ahead in this case, I can go ahead and publish it, but I am a good librarian and I'm gonna go ahead and add a reference for this so that people can find the rest of that information. And I'm gonna reference our Finding aid is what I'm going to reference. So I'm going to add a reference URL, um, which essentially points people to more information about this. And I'm going to use the finding aid. I'm just going to copy the link from the finding aid and put it over in Wikidata. And once I've done that, I can click on publish and it will give me that information. I can also add um, his employer. I do know that it was the port of Savannah um, that he was a maritime pilot for. So we'll add employer. And he was employed by the port of Savannah. Now, me having the ability to add all of these in this very easy way that I've done does mean that there is already 
a Q number for Port of Savannah. If that weren't true and you wanted to add information about link the Port of Savannah to um, your the person you're describing, you would need to go create also a Q number for Port of Savannah. So you may find yourself, depending on what you're describing, especially with rare materials, you're having to do this a couple of times. We're gonna add another reference here. It's gonna be the same one. There are some plugins in Wikidata for making this easier, but it works this way to add them one by one as well. And then we will publish this. So he has an employer. We can keep going. There are many, many other things to say about him, birth dates, death dates. Um, but I do wanna make a note um, before we kind of move on a little bit about adding identifiers. In Wikidata, there is no standard of notability like there is for Wikipedia, but there is a little bit that they want this person to show. Editors sometimes will want you to have a little bit of notability. In other words, they need to be mentioned in an external source to Wikidata, not just Wikidata. Often a way to establish this is to add an identifier. This is something that was discovered in um, the PCC project um, run by the Library of Congress um, to look further into how libraries can engage in Wikidata. So best practices for libraries is to go ahead and add an identifier if you can find one. Some good places to look for those are Library of Congress name authority file, um, VIAF is a good source of identifiers. And if you have somebody who is not as prominent. Other places you can look is WorldCat Identities. If they've ever, if they're described in OCLC at all, they'll have a WorldCat Identity. Or even things like Find a Grave or some of the other websites that are out there. Those are all good sources of identifiers. In this case, he is actually in the Library of Congress Name Authority file. Um, he published um, a book about the Port of Savannah um, and so he does have an entry in the name authority file. And that is what we are going to add. So we'll look for Library of Congress Authority ID, which is what we have. And his authority ID is right here. I'm going to go ahead and copy, I'm going to copy it out of the header here so I can just get the ID. Sometimes you have to play around a little bit. Um, with the number, so it takes it. In this case, it didn't want the whole URL, it just wanted the number with the prefix on it. So that is essentially how you do this. We have all now four triples published um, for Frank W. Spencer. We can keep working on this. You can work on this. It will still be up um, when this is shared with the live conference. So I do want to spend a couple minutes to say it is important to go ahead and justify and track your work in Wikidata. This is this is real work. And this is not just to make your administrators happy, though that certainly can be a benefit to be able to give statistics. Tracking your work can help you see what you've accomplished. That's one of the benefits. And also, it's a way to provide pathways for others to continue to enhance your data. Wikidata works because other people can now come in behind me and tell me things that I don't know about Frank W. Spencer and continue to enhance these sorts of connections. One great way to track your work and um, make your work available is to create what's called a wiki project. Anybody can create one of these if you have an identifier in Wikidata. And it's basically a Wikipedia-like page. It's a wiki page that documents what you're doing in Wikidata. So this is Emory's wiki project page. And on our page, we include information about what projects we're working on, some information about if anybody's interested in participating, what sources of information they can use, um, instructions for creating data, resources to learn more about editing Wikidata for project participants and other information. So it's a nice place to keep track of what you've been doing. Another great tool um, within Wikidata are these Wikidata dashboards. They're a fantastic way to track editing metrics and capture how many edits you've made over a given period. Um, there's instructions for creating dashboards. Um, when these slides are shared, you can follow the links on this slide. 
um, to learn how to create dashboards. Um, and it'll be able to let you set a time period. And then people, people with usernames can attach themselves to your project and you can track everybody's statistics. So this is kind of a little brief overview of how to create data in Wikidata. So I'm gonna turn it over to Cliff now um, for more ways to work with Wikidata and link up some of the information that we're creating in Wikidata back with Wikipedia. Great, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Let me see, make sure I got my right screen here and we're good to go, excellent. So let's talk a little bit about Sparkle. Sparkle is the standard query language and protocol for linked data on the web or for working with RDF triple stores, which you don't need to worry about. So Sparkle is a recursive acronym, short for Sparkle Protocol and RDF Query Language, which you don't need to remember. But basically the Wikidata Query Service is the place where you can build queries to show data from Wikidata. And it uses the Sparkle query language. But Sparkle is complex as you can see here and it takes time to learn. So I typically either use an example query and modify it for my needs, or more recently, I'll use the Query Builder tool, which you can see linked at the top menu. And so this Wikidata Query Builder tool is relatively new, but it works really great at um, building queries in a visual way that makes sense. So here I'm looking for every item where the instance of matches human, and then narrowing it further by looking for items where the occupation is archivist. And so a fun thing to notice on the right side over here is that the second item lists the queue number because the second item doesn't have an English label for whoever that person is. So although Wikidata leans heavily towards English, it's built to be multilingual. So here are some other example queries that you can try out. So looking at maps of archives and special collections in Georgia, a map of all the museums in Georgia, and a map of libraries in Georgia, as well as queries for people who have worked at Emory. So anybody who has that employed at Emory University will show up inside of your Wikidata query. But ultimately, I wanna to return to the question of discoverability because that's the thing that I've found has uh, drives more traffic to our finding aids is to include this archival records template on the Wikipedia page for the person or the organization that you're describing. So Wikipedia is where many folks turn for quick discovery of information about a particular topic. And because it's so popular, it's also a great place to put discovery points for researchers to go further. And so here's an example Wikipedia page for Anna E. Hall, a Methodist missionary whose collections we have here at the AUC Woodruff Library. And in the blue boxes, you can see an external link reference to our digital collection of Anna E. Hall's materials. So this uses the site web template where each part of the citation is basically spelled out. But notice in the red boxes, you can see the archives at template and the archives at template is where only the title is defined. And that's because the data in the archives at template actually lives in Wikidata. So all the location, the identifiers, the source information, that's all being pulled from Wikidata and put into Wikipedia. So let's see how it looks in Wikidata. So over here on Anna E. Hall's Wikidata item page up at the top, we can see the archives app property has the value of Robert W. Woodruff Library, Atlanta University Center. Next, we can see the additional qualifiers under the statement, which adds some additional context to the statement, such as the subject's name, the inventory number, and the URL where the archival finding aid can be found. We also have a reference to show the evidence supporting this statement. And at the bottom, we can see again how the data from Wikipedia, excuse me, how the data from Wikidata is showing up on the Wikipedia page for Anna E. Hall. So if users want to go straight to the source, straight to the finding aid, there's a direct link to it. And so one caveat that I do have to say about this archives at template is that it doesn't currently support split collections, but that's a feature that we've requested. And I know that the folks who work on it are going to be working on it soon. So now for a mini workshop part two. 
So let's return to our example collection from Georgia Southern, the Frank W. and Lillian Spencer collection. Now I've created an article for Frank W. Spencer in my Wikipedia sandbox. So now all I need to do is move it to the article space and add the archival records template to that. And so I'm gonna navigate over to Wikipedia and go to my sandbox. And I use this little sandbox organizer tool to help me out. I'm gonna click on articles and go to the Frank W. Spencer article in my sandbox. And you can see I've already written up just a basic uh, article about Frank W. Spencer for Wikipedia. And so it lists his life and career, his community and civil rights activism, marriage and children, information about his death, his published works, and of course, a whole bunch of references and notes that'll help uh, prove that he is truly uh, notable by Wikipedia standards. So now I'm just gonna go to move this to the article space and say my reason is article is ready to publish. And I'm gonna move the page. And so now if I click on this Frank W. Spencer, you'll notice that now we're back in Wikipedia and now we have the Frank W. Spencer page. But it's not 100% complete because I do need to go back and add that archives at template, or excuse me, the archival records template to this page so that it starts pulling that data from Wikidata and displaying it here inside of Wikipedia. So I'm gonna go up to the top, I'm gonna to click on edit, and then I'm gonna navigate down to the references, and I'm gonna do a couple of curly braces, type archival records, and close curly braces. Now I'm going to say, adding the archival records template and say this is a minor edit and publish. And so now when we go to the bottom, we can see this archives at template is in here. But the one thing that we notice is that the uh, data isn't being pulled in yet. So we're gonna go back to Wikidata and we're going to connect Frank W. Spencer's Wikidata entry to his Wikipedia entry. So I'm gonna look for Frank W. Spencer. Here we can see the civil rights activist and master river pilot, which is awesome. And we can edit the Wikipedia area to say that there is a Frank W. Spencer now in the English Wikipedia. So I'm gonna type EN for English Wikipedia. And the page is Frank W. Spencer. And you wanna make sure you select the right one. So we make sure we click on Frank W. Spencer and click on publish. And so now all of the information about Frank W. Spencer, including the archives at the Minnis Room and Armstrong Campus Archives described at the URL with the finding aid, all of that is going to be available back over here on Frank W. Spencer's Wikipedia page. So I'm gonna click F5 in order to refresh. And it may take it just a second because they only just got connected. And that's the problem with doing live demos, even if it is a recording. Well, I can just say, trust me, <laughs> since it isn't working live, let me double check, make sure, yep, archives at, Minus Room and Armstrong Campus Archives. Eventually it will show up on this page. That is the, the peril of trying to show you live that it may actually take a few minutes for this connection to actually show up correctly. But with that, I can tell you that once this connection is made, it's gonna pull that data from Wikidata, show it on the Wikipedia page, and then users will be able to click the link to go straight to that finding aid for the Frank W. Spen Frank w. and Lillian Spencer collection and be able to find out more about this person. And so with that, I'm going to move on to the next part of the presentation. So as we saw earlier, adding these links to Wikipedia increase the density of our traffic coming from Wikipedia to our institution's finding aids. And I'm gonna show you just a couple more uh, ways that you can interact with Wikipedia and Wikidata. One of which is to participate in an existing Wikipedia project or excuse me, wiki project. There are a wide variety of these wiki projects available, each one focusing on a particular knowledge domain, from paintings to plants and street maps to Swedish church parishes. 
So Wicked projects are a great place to get started in your work since working collaboratively on a goal can help keep you know, your movement and motivation going. So you can try integrating Wikipedia and Wikidata into your outreach work by hosting an edit-a-thon or by editing, adding these tools to your instruction program. And another particular tool I find helpful is Scolia. It allows you to leverage visualization in order to tell the story of your data. So Scolia is a visualization tool specifically for scholarship and bibliographic information. So depending on whether you select topic or organization, location or publisher, you'll get different kinds of visualizations to help display this scholarship and bibliographic information. And just in case you ever need a crash course refresher after all this is over, here's a one page cheat sheet to help you in your Wikidata editing. And we're gonna include that link on the slide. And with that, we hope that we have given you a crash course in uh, Wikidata for small archives. So we wanna thank you for your time and attention today. And we look forward to hearing from you.